Hello guys, I'm Alex and today we're going to look at another Speed Queen commercial dryer. The complaint is that the dryer is not getting hot. So it could be many things. It could be an igniter, it could be a gas valve, coils for the gas valve, it could be a thermostat, it could be a sensor, it could be so many things. So we're going to turn it on, go through the cycle and then we'll see what's wrong with it. So don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, to gain access to the equipment. We're gonna undo the two knots. Now we're gonna remove the panel, is the lower panel grab from the bottom and then pull out and now we're going to go through a cycle so of course it's plugged that's what we want so we're going to turn it on and let's go through the uh, sequence of operation you're going to hear two clicks when we push the start button the first click is going to be this solenoid gas valve allowing power through this solenoid to the igniter over here. This is the igniter over here. And then once the igniter gets red hot, the sensor, the flames, the, uh, the sensor is gonna sense that it's hot, it's okay and then through these blue wires is going to open the gas valve and then uh, gas is going to come out it's going to fire up and then once if it satisfies the temperature it's going to turn it off and then the cycle is going to go on and off until hopefully your clothes are dry so let's run a cycle to see what's going on and do you hear the click it clicked, but let's see, to see what it's doing. Now, by now, it's supposed to be red hot, but it's not. It's not doing anything. So let's see if we have power. This is a non-contact voltage tool. This tells me there's power or not. So if you hear the click, that tell, that's telling me that there's power. Uh, it doesn't tell me how many volts, but it's telling me uh, that there's enough power that should turn that igniter on. And there's power going to the igniter. So we disconnected the igniter and it was connected to here. So the power comes to here and then it goes to the igniter. So we're going to make sure we have 120 volts here. If we have 120 volts here, that means that the igniter is getting power, but it's not working. It's a faulty igniter. So let's let's see. So we have 120 volts going to our harness, going to the to the igniter, but it's not working. So it's more than likely that it's a bad. We're going to test it. I'm going to show you how to test it, and then uh, we'll see. So to replace the igniter, the first thing we're going to do is disconnect the power. So this is the igniter we have. We're going to use. It's a uh, part number D five one zero one eight four P as in Peter. So let's open it up, and I'll show you. So to remove the igniter, this is the igniter right here. Uh, you don't have to remove the bracket. You just have to remove the actual igniter. And there's this bracket here, this metal here, you see? You're gonna push out and then pull your igniter. Okay, so, so you this, see this bracket? I'm just pulling away this tab to the right and this to the this tab to the left and this part to the right so because it's 
hold this bracket is holding my igniter so now that I release this tab here I'm gonna pull my igniter and your igniter should come free and I want to be careful I want to show you what's going on with this igniter so if you see here this part is like chalky like whitey you know, uh, so that means that uh, the power doesn't flow very well there. See, look at that, it's broken right there. Uh, so that's a broken igniter. So we're gonna replace it. And we have our new igniter here. You have to be very careful because they are very fragile. So this is, the new igniter is all cleaned. And if you see a white spot it looks just white here, but it's broken on the other side. So let's check for ohms, just in case. You can, it, sometimes it's broken and you don't see it. So We're gonna read ohms, and for this you need a multimeter. Most modern multimeters you use, you have to select the less amount of ohms, but most of the modern um, meters are out of range, so you don't have to do anything. So that's 74, 74.5, so that's a good igniter. Now let's test the old one. The broken one. So that's 418, um, so it's not good. Uh, if you wanna check continuity with sound, you go to your meter, and it has that selection here. It's a, it has a, this one here next to the ohm. And when you touch them together, it has a sound to it. That, that means that that's, there is continuity. Most igniters, you can test for continuity. Uh, this one has a high resistance on the igniter itself, so you are not gonna be able to to read continuity on this heater due to the high volume of resistance. We are just gonna read the um, amount of ohms, but it doesn't give you continuity with sound. That doesn't mean it's bad, it's just that. You're gonna remove your igniter. From the packaging, be careful. Be very careful and then you're gonna remove the bracket just the way you remove it remember you're gonna open up these and these so it comes right out just like that and we're gonna put it the same way we took it out so you see the bracket there, we're gonna just put it in between. So pull the bracket apart, and then it's gonna make a click. There you go, did you hear that click? So now we're gonna plug our harness. This guy, and the new one. So these two together, there you go. And now we're going to turn it on and see what happens. So we're going to plug it in because we're going to test it. Turn it on at the switch. Do you hear the click? Now it just sent. I'm going to turn the lights off so you see the igniter. Hopefully, this time. There you go, so the igniter is getting red hot. Now it's allowing power going through and the igniter sensor on the left is going to recognize that and it's going to send the signal to the coils right there. There you can see we have flame, Houston we have 
of me. So there you go, that's it. The drive has been fixed. And then after you are done, just put the two screws back. So that's it for today, guys. It was a simple repair that could save you $150, $200. So if you like this video, you benefit from this video. And if you want more people to see this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much and see you next video.